Professor Skinner has identified three main features that we find in all teaching machines. Continuous, active responding by the student, immediate confirmation or correction of each response he makes, and provision for the, each student to proceed individually as rapidly as his abilities permit. Professor Sidney Pressey at Ohio State University was the first to implement these conditions in a teaching machine. Using one of Pressey's early machines, this child answers each question as it appears in a window of the machine by pressing one of the four keys to show which answer she thinks is correct. If she picks the right response, the machine goes on to the next question. If wrong, she tries again until she gets the right answer. Meanwhile, a counter provides a record of her performance. Pressey also developed some simplified devices, such as these, used in conjunction with questions on a mimeographed form. More recently, attention has centered on the preparation of long, carefully programmed sequ sequences of teaching material based on techniques originated by Skinner. With most of the current programs, the student constructs his own response by writing it in machines, like this one, which preserve a continuous record of his responses, or simplified machines, like this one, in which the student writes directly on the program material. Of course, the heart of any machine is not the external hardware, but the program of instructional materials which it presents to the student. The current prevailing trend is to sequence this material in very small steps, to each of which the student can respond easily and naturally as he proceeds. Here, for example, is the first frame of a program in high school physics. After the student has written his response, he verifies it by disclosing the correct answer. So gradually are the concepts developed that he is almost always right. Here's the third frame in this same sequence. The answer the student has written is again verified when he discloses the answer panel. Although each step is very small and easy, the student quickly extends his knowledge about the subject matter. For example, a few seconds later, he comes to this frame, which requires him to predict a new fact. After about 30 more steps, the student can state correctly in his own words a general rule that covers the concepts he has studied. To get to this stage may take only about 10 minutes for a bright student, or as long as half an hour for a slower student. But meanwhile, all students have acquired real understanding of the concepts through repeatedly employing them in varied contexts. A most important step in developing these carefully sequenced materials is that they are tried out in preliminary form with students so that they go through a process of cumulative revision based on students' responses before they're considered ready for wide-scale use. The analysis of student responses to each step of the program removes many ambiguities and stumbling blocks to understanding that would otherwise lead to errors and misconceptions. A very large number of frames is required to cover a subject matter like physics. For example, at the American Institute for Research, Dr. David Krauss developed about 3,000 frames to cover six weeks of high school physics. A large-scale tryout of these materials in 15 Pennsylvania schools showed substantial gains in the knowledge of physics that was attained, even when the materials were used on a voluntary basis. The importance of the program, as distinguished from the machines, is brought out by the fact that in these experiments, the materials were presented in a special form of program textbook like this, rather than in a machine. Instead of reading down the page as in an ordinary book, the student reads just one frame at a time. Then he turns immediately to the next page, verifies his answer, then goes on to the next question, and so on. In a quite different approach, developed by Norman Crowder, more reading is required before the student responds. Crowder's material is either presented in a complex type of machine, such as this, or in a special form of book in which the pages are arranged in scrambled order. Here the material is not programmed in such detailed small steps. Rather, the program is packaged in harder steps, somewhat like this, and the student answers a test question after reading each entire page. 